uh, Andreas uh, from uh, Toto Teo, and uh, we have uh, Thomas Rebenhagen from Uni Team, yeah, and uh, the two other gentlemen you have already met. I will um, we will try to jump to it, jump into it, and if you want more information, you have the photos and here, and I think also on the website there is a, is a bio you can read. Um, I would like to start with, with you, Thomas. Um, so you are one of the leading ship managers, yeah? And uh, of course also you do uh, crew management, or you assist owners with the management of their vessels, yeah? And uh, now you see um, DNV and uh, also here how, how the digitalization and so on is moving on. And how are you um, preparing yourself in the company and your clients? Uh, what's, uh, what strategy do you actually have uh, to, to cope with all the new technologies? Yeah, thank you, Hendrik. First of all, uh, we heard a lot about Generation Z today, and uh, as you guess, I'm not one of those. But uh, when I started my career in uh, the late 80s, the old man I was sailing with, he for sure thought I'm Generation Z. I was uh, a young kid at that time. And uh, having an ARPA radar set on board was quite an innovative uh, piece of equipment at that time. Uh, nowadays, you all agree it's, it's quite a common equipment. DNV talked about ships of the future. Um, what we are doing and uh, what we have done long ago, even before COVID, we moved away from uh, classroom training. We went into more innovative uh, training, micro-learning. Uh, we tried to teach people shortly before we refresh their knowledge, shortly before they have to perform a task. So we have invested a lot into uh, bringing up um, the knowledge of our seafarers by, by these micro-learning uh, tools. Uh, we have also uh, invested into gamification, so we saw that the new generation learns faster or easier when they play things, and by playing they are learning. So this is something we have done. We have created uh, a tool which was called Talent Cards. So people who were aiming for a promotion, they have to complete a certain set of talent cards, certain set of training to, to be ready for the promotion. Um, in the office, uh, we look at RPA, we heard about it, this uh, robotic process automation where, where things can be simplified, uh, automated to avoid mistakes and to increase the efficiency. So that's, that's in short what we have done. And uh, I'm interested to hear what, what the others are doing or yep. how we compare with the, with the rest of the um, or companies here. Yeah. Moving on, actually, so one of your things is maybe that, uh, again, coming back to the connectivity and the technology and the IT on board and so on, and I think Andreas is an uh, is, uh, expert in this from his company, and, and how do you see the connectivity and the, um, the technology, um, digital technology on board is going to evolve until uh, 2035? Oh my God, yeah. if I knew that Amstra wouldn't be here, mm. I'll be there preparing and selling it. Yeah. Um, if you just take that question from the point of view, industry one, two, three, and four, we are actually now in industry 4.0. Uh, and we went from hand to machine, from mass production to computerization, not digitalization. I guess, and I have foreseen in the next 12, 10, 15 years, we'll be still on industry four, okay? I cannot predict how the communication will be done. It will be low Earth orbit satellites, it will be normal satellites, it will be Starlink, other competitors of Starlink. But definitely I can tell you that you still will have IoTs. You will have uh, connectivity like 5G on board, so which is robust. You will have to have more sophisticated cybersecurity. And definitely there will be connections which will be done let's say, smartly, automatically, and intelligently. I don't like using the word artificial intelligence because I'm a baby boomer and my term artificial intelligence meant an algorithm. Uh, and we used to say, yeah, you crap in, crap out. So artificial intelligence at the moment is quite good. And if I even ask uh, uh, AIGBT, it will tell me that I don't have the answer to the question. 
So <laughs> artificial intelligence will be used in that way. Um, but what I see staying in 2035 is not, we are not moving in Industry 5. Okay? It's something like what we have now. Now, in 2050, and I base my knowledge on that on some other gurus in the industry, in 2050, between 35 and 50, things might move much radically. And there are more people you have the so-called Industry 5. But at the moment, that's what I see. And I hope that answers your question, sir. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Actually, um, from, um, from DNV, we heard how the ships will develop and so on, and maybe, as you said, they will not change too much uh, from outside. Um, I was actually reading the other day that what we, are, what we are facing now is actually maybe a revolution like uh, when the Vikings or the Greeks, I don't know who, were, yeah, the Greeks were first, but the Vikings later did the same, put a sail on the ship. And suddenly you were not rowing any longer, and you had a, a range uh, that you could reach... Uh, the North American continent, actually. And somebody saying this is the revolution we are going to see now with the deprivation also. But um, just to jumping a little bit here, so um, what, how, how do you, um, I mean, all this digitization and so on, there will still be people on board to, to maybe not to operate the ship, but at least to maintain them then, maybe, because the maintenance-free ship, so far we are not, I guess. Um, but do you have any, this, I mean, maybe they go a little bit back, there will be from today when you're standing looking out to sea and you turn a little bit on your autopilot and so on when you see another ship here, yeah? when all the systems are going to do this for you, we need uh, actually a different uh, set of mindset on board. Yeah? So the um, situation, situation awareness of the duty officer becomes much more important yeah? when you have to understand what happens around you and not do the things yourself. How, DNV, do you, do you have or do you investigate any in the future rules on, um, on, on I mean, there's always the, the one thing with the class, maybe there's, there's the statutory rules and class always have something better. Do you, do you see something better in this in the future on how, how training is going to do? And so is it something you're working with or well, we have it already, maybe? Um, for sure there are uh, rules uh, for control and monitoring systems for many years. And uh, what you're describing is actually the new generation of a control and monitoring system. So uh, the basic principles of the existing rules will actually not change. Uh, it will be uh, maybe more difficult or even it will take uh, different ways of verifying compliance but uh, basic principles in terms of uh, user interface, uh, control and monitoring systems, their design, their arrangement, um, are still there. Uh, what is different and what will be different, uh, and what DMV has been and will be working on, is how you handle all the data that uh, will be accumulated from uh, these new systems and will need to be handled, stored, and processed. So actually, uh, TMV has already developed uh, class guidelines. Normally, when we are not confident enough to say that this is a rule, we start with the guidelines, uh, more or less to help the industry from our experience, from our uh, insight, together to develop new systems and set the uh, basics for the future rule requirements. So there are class guidelines already in place and continuous level development related to the data infrastructure systems, uh, the data collection systems that all these uh, new type of controlling monitoring systems on board the vessel uh, will base their uh, operation on. Okay, so this, this is something you're working on or you even have it, yeah? Sorry. So this is... Uh, um, Christoph, um, how in the future we saw also in, in, um, in DNV's presentation how that, uh, that uh, all the ship type, there's not going to be one solution to all this uh, decarbonation. Maybe after 2050 it will be standardized again when there is a nuclear vessel or whatever they end up with. But, uh, but how, do you, how, how should a ship owner actually uh, prepare? How, how, uh, how, how, what's your training? How do you see the training platform? The ship owner will have today basically 
a sheep owner have one type of, uh, if you talk about Indian one, one type of Indians, yeah, two stroke, maybe four stroke, but at the end it's the same. And how do you think uh, sheep owners should, or how do you think sheep owners will cope with all these different technologies in the future on the training side? Uh, from my perspective, there are two aspects, right? One would be, uh, that's a responsibility for everybody. From us as a solution provider, it should be as simple as possible. Uh, we are getting an Apple phone now without any manuals, right? So um, that, that would be one approach, right? But obviously we, we need to train our people. We get the app, Apple phone, but we are... Without we the, take <laughs> two, two years to play with it before we understand how it is. There is a manual, nobody reads it. Yeah, 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 exactly. You look at YouTube, right? And, and that's where we are thinking we are going as well. We are going more to an adaptive learning process, right? I need to fix today one particular thing, I want to see this thing in a training video and I don't want to see a video which is uh, two hours long and I need to find somewhere in, in the place uh, where they are talking about this. If you try to connect a little bit to the first presentation we have here from PwC, right? so they were, how they were, I noticed one thing that how they were putting new employees in this, with not the, the 30 CPTs in uh, Seagull uh, before the head of them the first day, but they did it actually in small step, a few, yeah, yeah. one hour, half hour, one every day. Uh, e was exactly, yeah. and we want to bring it down to 15, 20 minutes, yeah, yeah. maybe even yeah. shorter, right? So shorter, because yeah. I want to focus on that, and uh, I think that was also Thomas saying with microlearning, micro right? Yeah. Focus on that task I'm not comfortable with rather than repeat everything. I, mm. for, for me, I bring it always back. It's like, okay, I have a driving license, but does that mean I can really drive? Yeah. Maybe I can drive but not park, right? So let's focus on the parking rather than the driving. So coming back to my first point again, maybe that the, um, we need people on board with, a different, uh, with different competencies and different mindset. Not only that, the, that uh, the situation awareness, but actually also we need somebody with a IQ, actually, which is high enough to do the adaptive uh, learning. Yeah? Exactly, and it also when we come back to IoT, as, as uh, Andreas was mentioning, right? Who says it might not be monitored from the shore side at one point, right? But if, if can I add on that one? Because I, I was discussing more or less the same subject a week ago on another panel. But now you just mentioned the design for 2035. And it, got, it takes me back to the early 70s and 80s. We used to, I'm a naval architect, so we used to design for production. Now we design for efficiency. We never design for the crew member. We never designed for welfare. Systems which should not scare us because they will be integrated and interconnected and most probably, as mentioned just right now, being operated on shore. If we want the seafarer to go on board, one has to know that it's going to do the seafaring job. And number two, it's not going to be missing anything from life. And before someone asks, oh, can you leave your phone and go on board the ship? The answer is yes provided that the ship won't give me a phone. Or provided that when I go to my cabin, I have a TV. And many people, if you look at on the psychology side, some of these gadgets we provide the seafarers sometimes, it might also promote isolation. Because we had the mess room for watching one movie, now we go to a room and watching it from our mobile phone in isolation. But in essence, uh, my message is nobody should be scared of technology, nobody should be scared of new machinery, because those are integrated and they're in such a way to make the life easier of those that are running it. What is most scary is designing for the future. Do I have ammonia? Do I have um, hydrogen? Highly explosive, highly corrosive? Those are more dangerous than actually scary, sorry, than actually the integrated systems that we put on board. Mm. But this also brings me to actually in, when we talk about the designs of the ships and you talk about the adaptive learning, it's, these two things go also hands in hands, yeah? because if you have some equipment on board, which mm -hmm. is it's not easy to use, you cannot do the adaptive learning, right? So that design has to come, the human factor has to come into the design, as you say. I think it's a very good point also to say if in the 70s, uh, it was a CPR production uh, optimization, then came actually all this, we had to have new bulk carriers and new designs uh, in the 2010 or something. This, this mm -hmm. was actually also partly decomposition and also CPR production because ships become 1,000 tons less yeah, that, uh, lightweight. 
And now we look at the efficiency, actually, only. Yeah? So that is, uh, that's interesting. For, I know for the nuclear power plants and also for the air, uh, aircraft uh, cockpits, actually the layout of all the displays and where the bottoms are sitting, there are human factors involved in how to, so people do not make mistakes uh, when they operate them. So, so there's maybe also something to come to the, to the shipping industry. Um, and also, do we have some questions uh, to us here? Not yet. Then there's somebody, make some, there's somebody wants to say, yeah, it's not only with. So, I'm loud enough, I <laughs> Like you want. Okay. Um, I'm Marcus. I have one question to you. Um, what we hear the whole day is that we have to think in new ways out of the box. And uh, I think we have to start um, more in the beginning, like in the universities, like uh, where they study Nautic and so on. Have you there some ideas or connections to change there what they get teached? Like we have hear it from uh, Nicholas that he learned stuff he never need on modern ships. That will be also, I think, a game changer <coughs> that you don't have to teach it to when they came out of the university. You have there some connections or ideas? Please, yeah. the, your question is very pertinent because the educational system we are working on at the moment originates back in the 60s, where the captain used to be a navigator. Today the captain has to be a psychologist, has to be a chemist, has to be an economist, has to be many other things. And you have two different levels. One, you have to educate those that design the ships, like me, to start designing the ships for the new generations. And then you've got for the seafarer, and that's what I keep saying, the STCW shell needs to be updated. Because it's not, even the MLC, which is much modern as a, as a labor convention, it still originates from the 60s. The conventions that they're there and they join and they came out as the MLC. So my opinion, and I insist, we need to put in place such an education, training, certification system that reflects today. Doing a patchwork as we do now does not really produce the result. I mean, we included the simulators in STCW without being in the legal system of the original convention. That's a patchwork. And I blame national, the flags, I blame the ports, I don't know. You can blame anybody you like. The answer to your question is simple. Yes, we need to upgrade the system, reflecting today's realities, and educate the people to that level. Because I'm telling you, Someone said before, why shall I do any more uh, navigation with the sun or the stars? My answer is simple. One flare from the sun, all the systems are down, what I do? Yes. So we still need navigation, but we still know how to use the new system. So, yes, to upgrade the educational system in all its entirety, including certification. It's important, yeah. How to do it? How to it's do simple. It, yeah. you, need, you, need to instruct, you need to instruct either by law. By law? Yeah, and to instruct by law the, the educational system to include the new stuff in, or the industry itself promotes that. It's, think, it's, yeah. it's either or. It's I, either or. I, I think when you talk about by law and so on, and new technologies, uh, I mean, if somebody, and not all here are from, from the tech department, but there's some... We have uh, when Actis was introduced. I think this is the most disastrous. Uh, <laughs> the disastrous came to call it. You put Actis on board the ships. Actually, the stand there's no standards at the end. You end up with hundred different systems and uh, thousand generic courses. And I'm always saying this must be something they have decided. Uh, all the training centers and IMO, the training centers to IMO out for for a nightclub in London, and then they went home and made this uh, it's because it's business for the training centers for the next 100 years. This uh, act is a convention. Yeah. So um, so that's that's one bad example actually how how uh, laws are. And I think in in the future it will be more industry driven. Yeah. You see the decarbonization also now. It is not. Uh, IMO is actually behind. Yeah, the consumers are coming. People do not. When people realize that the, 
that the television, everybody's interested in, in reducing the power consumption on the, because they don't want to have the CO2 footprint, but when somebody finds out that the television they just bought, uh, there was more CO2 output to bring it from China to, to uh, Europe on a ship uh, 30, with 25 knot speed, yeah? then this will come with other pressure to, to the shipping industry, pushing this decarbonation, I guess. Yeah? Um, other questions from the audience? Uh, it cannot be only one, or, or we covered everything. Or <laughs> did you get did you get your answer now? Okay, good. <laughs> now you did it. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Yes, this is right. Uh, and this is maybe also one thing when we talk about all this uh, training and all the things here. But one thing I also believe is going to change is that today they are I don't know. 30% 30, 30 of the sheep owners are training, and the other 70%, uh, they are just stealing from the pot the people who have been trained, actually. And I think when we move on with all these uh, specialized uh, systems and so on, and uh, individual ships and so on, then uh, this that you, we are just stealing somebody from the pot uh, who is trained is not going to work. And the sheep owners need to have a training strategy to, to cope with all this uh, themselves and, to, and, and put something in the pot also, yeah. To okay. uh, be honest with you, yeah. Chairman, uh, as we live today, and we are actually facing a major change, which is the change of fuel. That, of course, it will come uh, with other changes, but back to the question before we had the statement we have. It is important that this time, it's high time for, in, for our industry, to do things by its own rather than being imposed to it, either by law or by exogenous forces. So it's very good that if we act as an industry now, we're going to have also the lead of what we're doing. Yeah, exactly. This is, and it will be pushed, the developments in, in, in the shipping, and for which will have effect on the crew, will be pushed as a second on the end consumers who will want the decarbonization. And the other side, young people we need to attract will also push us to do things differently. Um, any comment to this? Uh, if I may, on this, um, actually nowadays the, the pace of evolution and of ways of learning is actually so fast that uh, there's simply no time to wait for uh, regulations, laws to adapt. And I say this, although I am representing you're the yeah, rule maker. <laughs> you, call it, you, you don't make like laws, you make only the guidelines. Yeah, and we do our best to be up to date. But uh, you see this uh, with the children at school. Uh, in the old days, uh, the, the teachers were directing the way that they will learn the educational system method. Nowadays, the children decide the way that they will learn themselves. Uh, they have much more uh, capabilities by using the tools that uh, technology offers them, YouTube, uh, AI, online, when they make the in order diplomacy. to find the solutions that they need and cannot wait for the educational system, fortunately, mm. to, to show them their way. Uh, so actually it's the other way around than it was before. Uh, the industry, the people who are first exposed to the changes are the ones that are setting up the trends, and the others follow. I think, I think very right. Uh, yeah. I had an interesting question during the coffee break from uh, Captain Andreas Michael, who's still here, and he said, who's actually missing on the panel here are seafarers, whom we should ask, mm -hmm. what do you guys need on board the ships, or what kind of training would you need, and how would you like to be trained to make your life easier on board? I think it was a very valid question. Thank you, Andreas. Yeah. Good. So, so, so what do we need? <laughs> yeah. uh, Nicholas, Nicholas was also a, a recent seafarer, let's say. What, but, yes, you. Uh, thank you, for Mr. Violaris, for taking this uh, chance to bring this subject uh, of crewing uh, in the conference because uh, it's a subject that you need 20 conferences and you cannot finish it. Uh, as usual, a lot of regulations and uh, that coming into shipping, nobody asks the crew on board or the officers on board 
what they need before they, they bring these regulations and whether it can be followed or not. The same when designing a vessel, nobody asks the crew, is this vessel good for us, is there to work on it or whatever. All the regulations that are made by people that most probably, they have very little knowledge of the sea life on board. And then they tell the people, okay, this is a regulation, you like it or not, you have to follow. And with the new technology that comes today, the technology maybe is on 100 and the, the crew knowledge is something around 40 percent. What is needed? We don't need too much new technology. We need the technology that is now to be simplified, to be understood by the crew before they go to the next stage. And the problems uh, the, with the crew, we just mentioned maybe only about 40% for actually is problems on board and with the crew. A lot of new regulations are coming in. They create a lot of problems, unfortunately, for the crew. And the crew, they cut down to such a number that they are just enough most, most of the times to take care of the safety of the ship, not for the maintenance. Uh, I think you have many right points there. One, one of the things is, of course, that the uh, statutory regulations we have made by governments, they are made by actually political compromises at the end. Yeah, even in that's, IMO. That's, there that's the problem. This doesn't always fit on the ship. I mean, and, and, and we talk about I, 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 IMO, IMO. Then, then you have the problem that is always the lowest factor which is deciding, yeah? So they have to make a compromise and, and they, they have to follow the lowest factor then who's, who, how fast they can read. So that, that's not a practical way. This is fully, fully right. Talk, yeah? Talking about uh, shore leave, sometimes you arrive in the port, you have the porter coming on board, you have the immigration, you have the custom, sometimes you have the class, you have the post control, everybody comes on board when you have about maybe 10, 20 hours there and the crew in the office is running after the inspectors and the surveyors, and they don't have time to look after the cargo or the uh, Okay, but maybe, maybe, of the this is one of, maybe this is actually one of the points where technology looking in 2035 can help us here, yeah, because then, uh, then uh, before the ship comes, uh, it will all be in the cloud and they can download all the things they need to see, and we have a much more standardized uh, procedures on the digitalization. I think digitalization will even in some, in the worst parts, uh, reduce this paperwork at one, one stage. Uh, it would not be nice for the authorities who's collecting the money from it, but it will be like this, I guess, at the end. Uh, but, um, but moving on, you, as you also to, to take up your trade a little bit, uh, when we talk about training and, and how the developments, actually, I have one also stairs on how this happens. So in the first places we had, so there happened some mishap on the ship, yeah? And if you look back again, the first thing we say, ah, let's fire the captain, he did this, yeah? And then comes the next captain, the next mishap's happening, and then we start sitting down, ah, let us make a new ISM procedure to avoid this, yeah? And the same thing happens again for the fourth time, and people will start thinking, ah, maybe we have to train the people, yeah? Because the next captain who came, he was as bad as the first one who was there, yeah? <laughs> so this, this, is, this is how it's... Uh, and that's where we come to the... To the um, to the development things and so on, that would have much more influence in the future. I think. Yeah, yeah, when we are looking at training trends, right, you see often when a good captain is coming on board, the training levels are going up and they're staying stable. If a captain is on board who doesn't care too much about training, people are starting training when he comes on board and then the training levels are going down. Now with data and we, we, with having the data in the cloud, right, we can analyze as well and see, okay, which one is actually a, a, a master or a captain on board who is promoting training, safety culture, mm. and who is actually not, not so much into yeah, that, yeah. right? But it's, it's all this communication is actually also taking some authorities, and in the future taking authorities away from, from the captains, maybe. Yeah? Yeah, in, in, in the same time, why do we need to bring a hard copy of every certificate on board nowadays? Yeah, yeah. This but, is but okay, really, that will come this is really outdated, right? And everybody. thinking about flying then the, the certificate which is coming late separately, yeah. talk about environmental decarbonization, right? Okay, yeah. so um, we are coming to an end. Last chance to ask a question today. Yeah, we got one here. Hi, thank you for all of your comments. My name's Nick. I'm the CEO at Greywing. We're a digital platform. 
Um, so we've got some experience with uh, digitization. And what I've noticed in my business is the biggest barrier to adopting digital technologies is, is myself. I'm the oldest person in the organization, and I'm the slowest to adapt to the new technologies. I'm also the slowest to see the value in them. And it creates a real problem for the people that work with me who are trying to move the organization along. Um, what I also notice, and Christoph may have some comments on this, is that when I look at how uh, our customers use Greywing, what I notice is the most prolific users are often um, and almost always uh, the youngest members of our customers' teams. I've got one example where the most prolific user was uh, the youngest member of the team, and then another team member joined who was even younger, and now he's the most prolific user. So I suppose my question is, is how do we manage that paradox that you know, one of the barriers to adopting digital innovation within the shipping industry is some of the leadership. You know, the fact that we are not digital natives, that the people coming through are the digital natives, and they're the ones who are often best placed to understand the value of the technology that's coming into the industry. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's, it's for, for, for you me. maybe, but, but also I think... One thing, at least in, in Danik, we have a lot of, uh, with the captains and chief engineers, that uh, the junior officers, okay, they are not as experienced, but they have a complete different resource, understanding technologies and where to find things in the internet and search for it and settings and so on. And we are encouraging our captains and chief engineers and top four officers to get this, re to use this resource that the young people on board have. Because it's, they are not experienced, but they have a different approach to the things and the more adaptive learnings they could do uh, and so on when new things come in. Okay, unlike the gentleman who make the question, I'm the oldest, no, like the gentleman, I'm the oldest in the digital company, but unlike you, sir, I'm the only one who uptakes the technology immediately and the youngsters don't. And the reason being, I think, personally, I have been technology friendly. And the question here was how we can prepare for new technologies. I think the question should have been reversed. How technology can be friendly for the user? Uh, we hear from all the production manufacturers, user-friendly application, user-friendly equipment, user... But we're just discussing now that these things might not be user-friendly. And the basic thing that we can make sure is in our education system, and it will come from the industry, is to make sure the eldest generation, when they educate it, they have an incentive or at least given the key to knowledge to be able to continue learning by themselves. We all walk around with an LCD screen in our hands. 93% of the population of Earth now has a mobile phone without keys. That telephone can take the Apollo 11 to moon. We can do things provided we are user friendly. If you give me a phone that I press the button, I press the screen and I see, I don't know, psychedelic circles, obviously I would not know what to do. But if I use Google 10 years ago and Google today, they don't have much difference. It's up to me to ask the right question. Mm -hmm. So I think what it's lacking and the only solution to that is not to be scared with the youngest coming in and they know how to play the game better or they can shoot the, the animals in the game they're playing, is to make sure when he to talks to me, actually makes sense. Because by blipping the numbers and showing me pictures, it doesn't mean that it's a good navigator, it doesn't mean it's a good engineer, it doesn't mean it's a good OA. So oh, me, I'm the experience to say, thank you very much, you use that technology, but it produces crap. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you short. agree from Oceania, Chris from me, with me with that one, but... That's how I see it. A short one from you, because yeah. I know you had to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same for me. <laughs> um, so I, I think it all comes back to the design of the... So in my perspective, mm -hmm. it's software now. And not, I'm not talking about engines or something. But it's about the design of the software. But that also means we as an industry, we need to accept that maybe people coming in and asking me, how do I want to have my software? Because we have... Our UI, UX team is actually going on board talking to the seafarers, and I know, I know the seafarers are not happy because that's an extra job to talk to them. Yeah, yeah. But if I want to have a user-friendly software, I actually need to take the time to tell the people as well what I need and how I need mm -hmm. it, rather than they telling me how it should look exactly. like. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, very valuable comments. I thank everybody for their 
participation here. And um, this was the last uh, panel here. We try to, what is the next? No, I, I got my, thank you very much. Thank I you. got my, I, thank you. <laughs> So I got my program mixed a little bit. We have now, I have to say something. <laughs> Let me see where it ended. Yeah, okay. So I have to say my closing remarks. I come with this now. Yeah, so um, I hope we had a interesting, a little bit longer day than we expected. Uh, it's uh, for Madonis and I was a little bit of balance. Uh, it was interesting discussions, but also we have a lunch and we have a time and so on. But I hope uh, we didn't step on too many and everybody could say what they wanted to do. Uh, just to recap um, very fast what we learned today. Uh, in the beginning, in the morning, um, IBM was talking about uh, AI, yeah? And uh, how this actually could affect the recruitment process, yeah? And I'm uh, involved in some other projects projects with Microsoft on this, and I would just want to tell you what he showed here on the screen about how uh, AI is going to work, not maybe in the maritime industry, because we are 10 years behind already, but how is this going to be done in other industries is, uh, is a good, is, is going to happen fast, I think. McDonald's is already using it in the US. Um, then we heard about uh, from PVC at, uh, what was important for, the, for their 52,000 employees here. Yeah? I saw salaries was one of the uh, fair salary, I think it was called, was one of the most important ones. And um, we have the same for the seafarers. And the next one was actually that you could develop. And the third one was uh, technology. Yeah? That was modern technology. So that's a nice thing for seaborne companies who build ships uh, with li lifespan is uh, 15, 20 years and nothing's going to change. So um, there maybe we have a problem with the young people then. Ute was talking about diversity is a very important point for all of us. Um, and uh, maybe with the technologies of the developments also will be, um, there will be more equality and so on. Um, yeah, actually, it was PVC, yes, PwC here. 92% of young people select career and employer because of technology. Mm -hmm. So we are still have ships where there are even not private facilities for the ratings. So we need to have young people to go there. Okay, there's something to think about. Then we heard about uh, team building, yeah, which was a very good presentation actually, and uh, how important this is. And teams will become even more important, I think, when we get all the technologies, less uh, crew on board, uh, and so on, and. Maybe we get not less crew because owners want to save money, but we need to have less crew because there are not enough uh, people in the world to man the ships. Yeah? Um, and uh, a point I always have here, how can an industry, and how came again in the seafarers happiness industry and so on, saying 30% of the seafarers are not paid on time. Yeah? 30%. It's a lot, yeah? Um, and... Uh, it was maybe not mentioned here, but it is in the index that 30% are not paid on time. So uh, go home here, everybody who is sitting and tell your managing director, I want my salary three weeks later next month. You will not accept this. Yeah? And we want people to be happy and develop and all this on this. Um, we heard about also, I think one thing is uh, Isvan's uh, helpline, yeah? which I know our seafarers are using a lot. I don't know what they tell you. And I shouldn't know, but I know they appreciate it. So I think this is an important thing that we have for the benefits, uh, for the welfare, such kind of uh, organizations here. And uh, remember to, you have the machine, I think, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> there's still batteries in it, yeah? Okay, so it's still working after here also now. So, um, and finally, we heard about uh, new vessels um, designs here and how this is going to develop. Uh, and... Uh, OTD was telling us about how the training is going to do and so on. So um, I think we, I hope, we cover this. I think Adonis, uh, everybody knows Adonis' emails and so on, and people can write if they for the next, there will be a second conference, I guess, yeah? 
this is not the last one uh, conference we have. Yeah? There will be one more next year, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, he is ready for inputs next year and so on, yeah? Um, so that is, um, yeah. Thank you to everybody <laughs> for coming and so on. And the good news for me is my suitcase arrived. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay.